it's no wonder. People are talking about Steinger, Isco, and Green. 800 On the go and need to know the weather? No problem. Text weather to 29,000 and get up to the minute weather forecast every day. Only from Storm Team Fox. Live, local. The Fox 29 10 o'clock news starts now. All right, for weeks now, many of us have been wondering, where is winter? I think we're about to get our answer. Rain tonight ushering in some of the coldest weather we've seen in a while. Fox 29 meteorologist James Whelan joining us now with more on the chill that's coming. Yeah, winter coming back here. We had about, uh, what, eight hours of it yesterday and then warmed up to the upper 70s today. Rain coming already cooling things down right now. In fact, temperatures went uh, from the mid 70s at six o'clock to now 60 degrees and still raining along the Treasure Coast and even down in the Palm Beaches. Looking at a little ways to go here with this rain. It's going to end though from west to east here. It's going to get a little bit more spotty after midnight and then end all together around 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Temperatures will be chilly overnight. Lows tonight, low to middle 50s. So we'll drop another uh, almost 10 degrees in a lot of locations. We may see some spotty upper 40s around. Tomorrow night will be the coldest night though with much chillier weather on the way and extended period of cold and windy weather headed our way. Sunday night, Monday morning, 38 to 40 degrees for actual temperature. We'll have a wind chill, a little bit of a wind chill, knocking off a couple more degrees from that. And we could even see some patchy inland frost then too. We'll talk about that in a complete forecast coming up in a bit. All right, James, I'm in the feed room tonight where the gloves are off as the Republican candidates for president continue to debate tonight as the first in the nation primary just Three days away for many in the crowded field like Jeb Bush, Chris Christie and John Kasich. Uh, they're showing in Tuesday's New Hampshire primary could determine how much longer they stay in the race. Now, there were many contentious moments as some of the candidates tried to blunt the momentum of Marco Rubio. You know what the shame is, Marco? The shame is that you would actually criticize somebody for showing up to work, plowing the streets, getting the trains run back on time when you've never been responsible for Chris, that in your entire life. Okay. And the, he didn't and, want to go back. And, and the fact is, I went back, it got done, and here's the thing. He didn't want to go back. I went yes. back. Oh, so uh, wait a second. Is that one of the, the skills you get as a United States Senator, ESP also? Chris, everybody, you said you weren't going to go back. The fact is, Marco. He told everyone he wasn't going to go back. And they had you, to shame him into going Marco, back. Marco, because. And then when he decided to go back, he criticized the young lady saying, what Marco, am I supposed you to know do, what? go back with a mop? Well, another key issue in tonight's debate, immigration. Both Senators Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio sticking with their positions on this hot button issue. That's a good sign. I believe the American people will support a very reasonable but responsible approach to people that have been here a long time, who are not dangerous criminals, who pay taxes and pay fines for what they did. But until then, none of that is going to be possible. But people coming on visas and overstaying. We will end sanctuary cities by cutting off taxpayer dollars to any jurisdiction that defies federal immigration law. And we will end welfare benefits for those here illegally. As for the Democrats, Bernie Sanders holds a commanding lead over Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. The Clinton campaign may know that her shot of winning the state is slim, which is why she's heading to Flint, Michigan Sunday, as the water crisis has been one of her main targets during recent speeches. Now, a reminder, Fox 29's Michael Williams is heading to New Hampshire this weekend for the presidential primary. Our coverage begins tomorrow night on air and online. You can also follow Michael on Twitter and Facebook for updates from New Hampshire. The Super Bowl is less than 24 hours away and final preparations are being made to keep it safe. The Department of Homeland Security says right now there are no credible threats, but is asking everyone in the area to report any suspicious activity. Super Bowl 50 will be held in San Francisco. The Denver Broncos facing off against the Carolina Panthers. Now, when you watch the Super Bowl, of course, you have the teams and the commercials, but the event isn't complete without some good food. Fox 29's Charlie Keegan learned the big game means big business for restaurants and sports bars. He joins us from one bar preparing for the big game. Charlie? I'm outside Palm Beach Ale House in West Palm Beach and they're starting to get a crowd out here on a Saturday night, but the manager expects this place to be super packed tomorrow for the Super Bowl and all week long they've been taking advantage, preparing to take advantage of that big boost in business. More than 100 TVs here will be tuned into the Super Bowl tomorrow. We have a lot of regulars, a lot of people from the area that come in. Palm Beach Alehouse manager Amber Irvin says the Super Bowl brings in a crowd similar to Friday and Saturday nights, typically their busiest nights of the week. Friday nights, Saturdays, we do get pretty packed. 
our sales are pretty high because we do have a lot of people that come in. The sports bar is prepared to turn pool tables into dining tables if football fans pack it in. Delizia, may I help you? If you think the phone is ringing off the hook tonight at Delizia Pizza, just wait until tomorrow. Some of them, they, they call early. They, 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 want me, they want to make sure that they're uh, you have the enough wings for them. Owner Al Eljai says every employee will be working tomorrow. He says business typically doubles compared to an average day. One day is not going to make the whole year. So, so but everything extra is help. A lot of restaurants offering specials for the big game. And in case you didn't know, it kicks off tomorrow at 6.30. The Carolina Panthers are playing the Denver Broncos. In West Palm Beach, I'm Charlie Keegan for Fox 29 News. Right now, reports from South Korea tonight that uh, North Korea has successfully launched a long-range rocket, one that could reach the U.S. mainland. The launch comes after last month's claims the communist country tested a hydrogen bomb, which drew more sanctions from the United Nations. Analysts see the tests as crucial steps towards the North's goal of a nuclear-armed missile. North Korea says the rocket was carrying a satellite. The number of Zika cases continues to go up in Florida. Two more cases were discovered, bringing that number to 14. Now, here's a look at all the counties that are now affected by the Zika virus in Florida. Starting next week, the state surgeon general will issue daily updates on those cases. Now, all the cases already confirmed are travel-related and do not involve pregnant women. Police in West Palm Beach responding to another daytime shooting, this one at the Presidential Golfview Apartments on North Congress Avenue. Detectives tell us a man was shot and the shooter is still on the loose. The victim is expected to survive. Police do not have any information on the shooter. If you have any information, call West Palm Beach Police or Crime Stoppers. A fundraiser for a missing West Palm Beach tennis and surfing coach will take place tomorrow. It's happening at the Lake Park Tennis Courts. 46-year-old Daryl Fornatora has been missing for more than a week. He was last seen on a surfing trip in the Dominican Republic. The Round Robin Tennis Tournament begins at 8 a.m. It'll cost you 20 bucks. Those donations will go to the search and rescue effort. We're learning the names of seven of the eight people shot overnight at a gentleman's club in Tampa. The youngest victim is just 17. The rest of those seven people are in their 20s or 30s. Police say their injuries range from minor to very serious. An eighth person was shot and killed. But police are not releasing that victim's name until they're able to notify the family. One woman who was inside the club during the shooting said once she heard the gunshots, everybody rushed quickly out of the club. It was like a stampede. People were stepping over each other. Some people had to go to the hospital for injuries or just being stomped alone. It's usually 150. Uh, it's not that big a crowd, and it's not always busy on a Friday night, but this just happened to be one of those nights somebody went crazy. Right now, police are still trying to uncover what started the shooting. As far as the suspects, detectives say they have several leads. Trapped between a car and a building tonight, one person in the hospital after a car crashed into a real estate office in Royal Palm Beach. Take a look at the pictures here. Happened in the 1000 block of Royal Palm Beach Boulevard. Someone inside the building pinned between a wall and the vehicle. Now, the driver of the car was not taken to the hospital. We just saw uh, here the impact. It sounded like a bomb exploded, and we all run out to see and put all safe. Two buildings in the area were evacuated as a precaution. An inspector was also called out to evacuate the safety of the structure. Records remain scattered on a New York street after a massive construction crane came crashing down during a snowstorm. Fox News correspondent Brian Yenes has more on the investigation. We live in a world where history is captured from nearly every angle. Watch your screen carefully as a man named Glenn Zito recorded the moment when a massive construction crane came crashing down. The accident in Lower Manhattan killing one, injuring three other people, and crushing a row of cars. Investigators have recovered a monitoring device from the crane. It is not the equivalent of a black box. Uh, it, the, the computer is going to give us some data. We're not sure the complete amount of data. Uh, it will likely give us the angles of the boom uh, of the two pieces that were uh, in action at the time. If it gives us more than that, well, that's, that'll be an extra, but um, I don't want to set expectations too high. The man who was operating the crane has been examined. We've tested him for alcohol and drugs and alcohol negative. Yeah. He's been very cooperative. 
And again, he's tested negative for all, all substances. The equipment belongs to a construction company called Bay Crane, which is a large operator in New York. We're going to talk about, uh, look into the, the metal, possible metal fatigue, uh, make sure that the pins uh, that are connecting pieces together, uh, the counterweights, uh, any wind information that's possible, what loads were done even before the previous day. It's going to be an A to Z. Several people were injured when the crane came down. The man who was killed was 38-year-old David Wicks, a Wall Streeter who was reportedly a math whiz. He grew up in Prague, but his life came to an end while simply walking down a sidewalk in Manhattan on his way to work. In New York, Brian Yenis. Fox News. Still to come on the Fox 29 10 o'clock news, devastating images from the powerful and deadly earthquake in Taiwan. We've got the latest in the search for survivors fighting terrorism through social media and how Twitter is joining the fight. And it was a chilly and wet end to the weekend for these vehicles, why these dri drivers were parked on the ice. FLX Fox 29. Get Storm Team Fox weather updates throughout the day on News Radio 1290 WJNO. You've upgraded all your old technology. So, what about this? It's time to get into the new with Ford. New shows you the world around you. New is best in class standard horsepower and torque. New is tougher, stronger, and lighter. New is Ford F Series, America's best selling truck 39 years straight. Now get into a new Ford F-150 with up to 10109 in total savings. Only at your South Florida Ford stores. Hello, Jupiter to Cuesta. I need some help with my air conditioning. Quick, efficient home repair is reason to celebrate. Hello, Jupiter to Cuesta. I need some help with my plumbing. Quick, efficient home repair is reason to celebrate. The new Range Rover Evoque. Land Rover, above and beyond. In South Florida, air conditioning is a necessity, not a luxury. Hi, I'm Mike Lang from Air Around the Clock. At ATC, it's our goal to make you comfortable fast and keep you comfortable. We've got the largest stock of American Standard air conditioners and parts in South Florida. A fleet of 100 trucks, live operators ready to assist you 24-7 and financing plans to meet your individual needs. Call Air Around the Clock today. Air Around the Clock, there for you yesterday, here for you today, and planning for your tomorrow. It's Kelly's anniversary week on live, and the stars are all invited. We wanted to do something special for you. You deserve it. Are we getting cake? <laughs> Katie Holmes and Vanna White on the next live. Live with Kelly and Michael, Monday at 9 a.m. on Fox 29. Tisha Campbell Martin and hubby Dwayne Martin. What is the secret? There is rules that we go by. Just don't wear flannel. <laughs> Next Fab Life. Monday at 10 a.m. on Fox 29. Covering America, a 21-year-old man who police believe is an ISIS supporter is in custody tonight. Investigators say Khalil Abu Rayon was plotting to shoot up a church in Detroit. The FBI had been tracking the Dearborn Heights man since last May. The fence documented one of his alleged plots. He told an undercover agent on social media he was planning to shoot up one of the biggest churches in Detroit. He was arrested during a traffic stop earlier this month. Rachel Rayon's Twitter account was one of 125,000 ISIS-related accounts shut down over the last several months. The social networking site says it's ramping up its anti-ISIS efforts by adding staff to monitor terrorist activity. Caught on camera, Highway Patrol officer pulls a man from the edge of a bridge. This happening on a highway overpass above a busy street in Fresno, California. Cell phone video captured a man walking right on the edge of the bridge, posing a danger to himself and to drivers below. Then standing on the edge, the man slips and an officer moves in for the rescue. 
It was a wet winter fest in Wisconsin after several cars fell through the ice. Emergency crews working to remove the nearly two dozen cars that partially submerged in Lake Geneva. Officials say the cars were parked on the frozen lake as an overflow lot for the event because regular parking is so scarce. No one was in the vehicles at the time and no one was hurt. Authorities suspending their search for two missing small planes. The Coast Guard says those planes collided in the above the ocean off the coast of Los Angeles and three people are missing. So the big question is what went wrong? Fox News Will Carr has the latest. Investigators are still looking for answers as they've transitioned from a search for survivors to a recovery operation after two planes crashed midair. It happened Friday afternoon near the port of Los Angeles. Port police tell us they didn't have to close the port but did have to redirect ships for a time. Witnesses say it was around 3.30 when they saw a plane plunge into the Pacific. At the same time, the FAA reported seeing two planes on radar disappear. One plane is a Beechcraft, the other was a stunt plane. By all accounts, the pilots were experienced and both were flying out of Zamperini Field in Torrance. Listen to what the Coast Guard has to say about the crash. We have found debris and other materials. We found a logbook of one of the pilots that helped us identify and, and uh, ascertain that there would be two people, two male passengers in one of the aircraft. We've since learned that there was another aircraft that was overdue expected into Torrance Airport. And we believe that there was one female passenger in that plane that may have been involved in the mid-air collision. It was a clear day, so it doesn't appear that weather was a factor, and most likely neither plane had a flight recorder, so it could be a real challenge to figure out what caused the crash. In Los Angeles, Will Carr, Fox News. New information tonight in the case against football star Johnny Manziel. A judge ordered he must stay away from his ex-girlfriend for at least two years. The woman got a protection order after last weekend's domestic violence accusations. Manziel's father says he's worried his son won't make it to his next birthday if he doesn't get help soon. He says Johnny refused to enter rehab twice in the last week. Cleveland Browns have said they will address Manziel's status when league rules allow it. They're expected to release him sometime next month. A no swim advisory now in effect for the waters near Sandspread Park on the Roosevelt Bridge in Stewart and also a nearby park near Old Palm City Bridge in Palm City. Now sample results taken this week show higher than normal levels of bacteria. The advisory will remain in effect until results show consistent readings in the good range. The areas will be tested again on Monday. A unity in the community barbecue taking place in East Stewart today. Members of the Stewart Police Department on hand with residents of the area. A police and residents partnering right now to decrease gun violence in the neighborhood. The Jupiter Jubilee taking place today. Now each year the Jubilee highlights Jupiter's unique character, history, community and natural treasures. In the spirit of conservation, the Jubilee is a green event and vendors, exhibits and attendees are encouraged to receive cycle, reuse, and conserve. More than 200 cyclists participated in the 6th annual Loop the Lake for Literacy cycling event today. Cyclists had the option of riding 14, 34, 68, or 115 miles around the shores of Lake Okeechobee. The event began and ended at the Port Mayaka Loxy in western Martin County. Many of the cyclists who rode today are as avid about supporting literacy as they are about cycling. All participants received a medal and awards were given to the highest individual and team fundraisers. Proceeds from the event benefit the Literally Literacy Coalition of Palm Beach County's Glades Family Education Program. All right, rain held off for all those events until now. We're seeing the rain out there at the moment on Live Fox Cam downtown West Palm Beach. Uh, some dreary weather and cool too. It's cooled off quite a bit. We made it to the upper 70s, like I said before. And well, now we're in the low 60s, and we're going to drop another 9, 10 degrees or so. 63 in Fort Pierce, 61 in West Palm Beach. Starting to track an area of heavier rain now, moving into the western parts of uh, Palm Beach County, western suburbs, say Wellington, up to Royal Palm Acreage. You're going to see a pickup, Western Boynton down. Boca del Rey too. It'll pick up here before all is said and done. And then we still have a little while to go before it's all out of here. So the forecast for tomorrow do expect to wake up and be a lot cooler with temperatures into the lower 50s. Some clouds around, maybe a slight chance of a sprinkle depending on how early you get up. Then we will have some afternoon clearing. It will be cooler 
windy out there, even though the sun will be out. Temperatures will struggle to even get into the 60s, 63 degrees. And with the wind, it's going to feel a lot cooler than that. We'll have wind gusts 25 plus miles an hour. What about the Super Bowl parties up and down the area? A lot of people have cookouts too for that. Well, if you plan on doing that, well, plan on wearing a jacket because it will be chilly. You're starting at 5 o'clock, windy and cool all the way through the nighttime hours. Minus a couple degrees here with the wind chill. That's what it'll feel like standing outside uh, with your bare skin in the open wind there. Cold front uh, pushing on through right now. All the rain out ahead of it pushing into the area again by the morning. I think the rain will be gone. The clouds will still be here, but it'll be a lot cooler. So check out Vipercast here, putting in the motion. The rain ends around two o'clock or so. Maybe we hang on to a sprinkle or two through the rest of the night. Then in the morning, notice we do have some cloud cover in the morning. Then by the afternoon, say one, two o'clock, we clear out. We see a lot of sunshine, very windy weather out there. It's not going to warm up all that much. Then for Monday night, well, temperatures really drop. We'll be talking lows into the upper 30s and low 40s and highs in the 60s really for the next five days. Looking like high temperatures only into the 60s when our normal this time of year, 75, 76 degrees is where we should be. Windy and cool for the beachgoers out there. Building surf for the surfers is going to be real nice out there. A head high or so by the end of the day. Offshore winds the next several days. Uh, so great surfing. Boating forecast, maybe not so great. Small craft advisory near shore. Gale warning for 20 miles offshore and beyond. Seas building very rapidly. Inland water is very choppy. Seven day forecast. Uh, like I said, staying really cold. Coldest night, Sunday night, Monday morning. As we get in through next week, we get another cold front on Tuesday, cooling us down again on Wednesday. Finally, we'll start to warm up by the end of the week and next weekend. Well, the Fox 29 10 o'clock news continues. See what hundreds of local students accomplished today and how it could play an important part of what we do in our future. And with temperatures dropping this weekend, you can count on these gentle giants congregating where you can go to see them for yourself. I'm Neil Marin, chairman of NAI Marin Hunter Codman, South Florida's premier commercial real estate firm. For expertise in commercial properties, turn to us. Please take a look at today's featured property. The stunning Golden Bear Plaza offers Class A office space in one of the area's most unique settings with private terraces, spectacular landscaping, and amazing views. Golden Bear Plaza has a complimentary fitness center, gorgeous amenities, and is minutes from Palm Beach Gardens conveniences. It's Mattress Firm's President's Day Sale. Shop now for huge President's Day savings. Save up to $300 store-wide, plus take an additional $50 off with instant savings rebates. Get Sealy Firm Queen Sets now for just $299.99. Plus, buy now and save up to $300 on our most popular Tempur-Pedic mattress set before prices go up. And sleep happy with no interest for five years. Only during Mattress Firm's President's Day Sale. Your car look says a lot about you. At Unlimited Auto Wash Club, we hand wash, dry, and put a beautiful shine on your car every time. Download our free app for savings all around town. Go to our website to download it now. If you take advantage of all the savings, it'll be like getting your car washed for free. Pay by the visit or join the club. We make you look good. Unlimited Auto Wash Club. Yes, it's different. Wayne Acres Ford and Lake Worth bringing you information through innovation. A cutting edge interactive store leading the way. Touchscreen kiosks, innovative video walls providing the latest information and other trend setting technology. And to enhance your experience, I will be your personal showroom concierge. We think differently at Wayne Acres Ford and Lake Worth bringing you information through innovation. Experience a new WayneAcresFord.com and be part of our social community. Wake up in a brand new light during City Furniture's President's Day mattress sale. Save up to $400 on iComfort and iSeries adjustable bases. Get a free box spring or $400 off adjustable bases on select Simmons Beautyrest. Plus, enjoy free shipping and no interest till 2018. Save on the biggest names in bedding in the showroom and at cityfurniture.com. Weather on the go. Text weather to 29,000. Sponsored by your South Florida Honda dealers. 
There is now a new vantage point to check out a certain endangered species in Palm Beach County. Hundreds of people packed Manatee Lagoon in Revere Beach. Now today to catch a glimpse of the sea cows. The visiting center features two observation decks, interactive activities, and plenty of resources to learn about the manatees. The facility is located adjacent to the FPL power plant, a popular location for the mammals to go when it's cold. It's all about the future, right? We want to make sure that future generations have the opportunity to see incredible animals like these because for a lot of people, seeing a manatee is, is a novelty, right? It's not something that you see every day. The power plant used to be open to residents and visitors to check out the manatees, but heightened security following 9-11 restricted access. Engineering and problem solving at Palm Beach State College today. Hundreds of middle school students from all over Palm Beach County competing in the 14th annual middle school after school programs robotics extravaganza. And as Fox 29's Alex Hagan tells us, it's an important program in attracting future engineers. At Palm Beach State College today, Competition is one thing. And we have a whole team switching between all of them. But there's a lot more to it for Andrew Kay, an eighth grader at Eagles Landing Middle School. We've had a lot of fun just programming it so that we can get as many points as we can doing all the tasks. Great job. His mom, Linda, loves this competition. Enjoys watching. You can see the excitement in their eyes. 23 Palm Beach County Middle School student teams unleashed their robot creations and were judged on how well their robots could complete different tasks. Mimic a sporting event. For school leaders, there's plenty of learning here, too. For for me, one of the most important pieces is they're learning to work in teams, they're figuring out how to do problem solving. And quite possibly setting the stage for future careers. This is the first year this competition was held at Palm Beach State College, thanks in part to a $900,000 grant from the National Science Foundation. To really uh, increase and show them all of the opportunities that they can reach with the engineering. Robots now, so he can program. And that's a field Andrew is considering. I see this as his building blocks to becoming an engineer. Setting a course for a bright future through the spirit of competition. In Palm Beach Gardens, Alex Hagan, Fox 29 News. About 200 students participated in today's robotics extravaganza. Still ahead on Fox 29. I am 100% confident this is a security review that was requested. It is being carried out. It will be resolved. With just days to go before the New Hampshire primary, will Hillary Clinton's private email controversy continue to be an issue? And good news if you own an iPhone with a broken screen. To bedtime. It is good. Oh, is it? WFLX Fox 29 has you covered. The recovery process. Start your day with the Fox 29 morning news and stay with us all day long. This is the best daytime TV show. <laughs> all day long. It's showtime. End your day with the Fox 29 10 o'clock news. There's right? a silver lining somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> WFLX Fox 29. We've got you covered. It's official. Volkswagen sales are up an incredible 20%. Now the new year brings new big VW savings. Lease a new 16 Jetta for just $119 a month or zero down. The new turbocharged Tiguan SUV, only $159 a month or zero down. Even the all-new 16 Passat, now just $179 a month or zero down. Or buy new Volkswagens with 0% for 60 months. So start the new year in a brand new Volkswagen and save thousands this week during our huge new year sale. Car accident? People are talking about Steinger is going green. They sure are. Get this. After Marita's accident, they got her $94,000. I like the sound of that. Then you'll love this. They got Eric $392,000 after his accident. Check this out. Steinger is going green got Rod $900,000. $900,000? Talk about getting paid. If you've been injured in a car accident, find out why people are talking about Steinger is going green. 800-561-1111. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't find anything. Just when I think it's just not going to work, this woman that works there comes over and asks, Can I help you? And he was so happy to do it. Amazing, right? I never would have expected, would have thought that anyone would find that. Do that. Make that. Go out of their way for me. Right then, right there. I couldn't believe it. He was so helpful. I know it's such a small thing. Little thing. Simple thing. But it made me smile. Made me happy. Made my day. <laughs> Share your story. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure.
The Fox 29 10 o'clock news continues now. There are just three days to go until the New Hampshire primary. Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State continues to be an issue. Publicly, Clinton says she's sure nothing will come of the FBI investigation into her email practices. But is that confidence justified or just wishful thinking? Fox News' Kristen Fisher is in Washington with the latest. Several former senior FBI agents are saying that the way Clinton characterized this FBI investigation during Thursday night's debate was misleading. You may remember she didn't even call it an investigation. She called it a, quote, security review. She also said she was 100 percent confident that nothing would come from it. I have absolutely no concerns about it whatsoever. I am 100 percent confident this is a security review that was requested. It is being carried out. It will be resolved. But former senior FBI agents told Fox News the FBI doesn't do security reviews. They do criminal investigations. They also say there's no way someone at the center of an ongoing investigation could possibly know its outcome. Calling it a, uh, a security review, I, in my opinion, was a deliberate attempt to make it appear to minimize, uh, to minimize the consequences and seriousness of what is clearly a consequential and serious situation. During the debate, Clinton also referenced a State Department review, which found that two other former Secretary of States, Colin Powell and staffers for Condoleezza Rice, had also sent and received classified emails on personal accounts. But Clinton's Republican critics are quick to point out that Powell and Rice's staffers only had a handful of classified emails compared to Clinton's 1,600, and neither Powell nor Rice had set up their own personal server. In Washington, Kristen Fisher, Fox News. Police is still looking for the shooter after one person is dead, another hurt in a shooting at an Orlando mall. Police say this happened in the Florida mall parking lot near the J.C. Penney store. Deputy says an injured 19-year-old man approached him while he was on duty, then collapsed when he got to the building. Another man was found dead in a vehicle. That 19-year-old currently being treated for critical injuries. Ethan Couch, the Texas teenager whose lawyers invoked an affluenza defense, is headed to an adult jail. Deputies there say he was moved from the juvenile detention center to the jail. They say one reason for the move is for his protection because he's a high profile inmate. Couch was convicted of four counts of intoxication manslaughter from a June 2013 crash that killed four people. He fled the country to Mexico last year, but was caught in December. The hearing to determine if he will be tried as an adult will be held on the 19th. A consumer alert prices at the pump staying well below the $2 mark. According to GasBuddy.com, the average price of gas rings in at $1.74. Prices down 26 cents from this time last month. 42 cents from this time last year. Right now, the lowest prices in Palm Beach County, $1.69 we found at the 7-Eleven on Military and Belvedere. On the Treasure Coast, $1.63 for regular at Murphy USA on US-1 near Jackson Street in Sebastian. Consumers are likely to pay the price for President Barack Obama's proposed $10 per barrel tax on oil. The tax would be paid by oil companies and would be used for clean transportation investments. The fee would only be applied to imported oil. Energy companies Companies will most likely pass along the cost to consumers. The proposal is unlikely to get through a Republican-controlled Congress. Good news if you own an iPhone with a broken screen, sources say Apple will soon allow you to trade it in. It has to be an iPhone 5S, 6, or 6 Plus. Apple's current reuse and recycle trade-in program only allows you to trade in undamaged iPhones, but the new program would accept the newer iPhones with broken screens, buttons, and cameras. From the big game to a big vote, Fox's Patricia Stark takes a look at the events coming up in the week ahead. Sunday, the big game is here. Super Bowl 50 kicks off in Santa Clara, California. Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers battle Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos for the chance to hoist the Lombardi Trophy and be crowned NFL champions. Tuesday, presidential candidates take to the Granite State for the 100th New Hampshire primary. Following his defeat in the Iowa caucuses, GOP frontrunner Donald Trump has the lead in recent state polls with 32 percent, while Iowa winner Ted Cruz falls to third place behind Marco Rubio. On the Democratic side, Senator Bernie Sanders owns a commanding lead over Hillary Clinton at 56 percent to Clinton's 37. As the first in the nation primary, it's seen as a real table setter for the election going forward. Also Tuesday, let loose, it's Fat Tuesday, marking the end to New Orleans' Mardi Gras celebration. Each year, thousands flock to the French Quarter with crazy costumes for a day filled with parades, parties, and beads. The event marks the last day before the Lenten season begins with Ash Wednesday. On Wednesday, President Obama feeling nostalgic, returning 
to Springfield, Illinois to address the state's General Assembly. It marks nine years to the date when, as senator, he announced his candidacy for president from the very same spot. Mr. Obama plans to call for more unified politics in the nation. Also Wednesday, strike a pose. New York Fashion Week begins. Fashion World visionaries travel to the Big Apple for the latest style trends. The event will run until February 18th. And that's a look at the week ahead. Patricia Stark, Fox News. Still to come on Fox 29, returning to normal. The steps taken to keep fans safe at the stadium targeted during the terror attacks in Paris. And feeling the hype of Super Bowl 50 will tell you how the big game could be a new era in the NFL. Like it. You're going to like the hottest full-size sedan in South Florida. The brand new, redesigned 2016 Honda Accord. Drive one today for just $199 a month. Honda Accords, the number one selling sedans that cost less than the competition. Fully equipped with available Honda Lane Watch, forward collision warning, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Get Accords for $199 a month. This week at your South Florida Honda dealer. Fact. 75% of Americans have some form of gum disease and are at almost twice the risk for heart attacks and strokes. Preventing gum disease is achievable by daily brushing and flossing and keeping regular dental visits. CETA Dental is now offering new patients a cleaning and full exam with x-rays for only $69. Call 877-987-4321 to schedule your appointment. CETA Smile, CETA Difference, CETA Dental. You've upgraded all your old technology. So what about this? It's time to get into the new with Ford. New lets you see around corners. New gives you a hand when yours are full. New can practically park itself. New is Ford, America's best-selling brand. Now get into a new Ford Escape for $219 a month for 36 months with only $27.39 cash due at signing. Only at your South Florida Ford stores. Hello, Jupiter to Cuesta. I need some help with my air conditioning. Quick, efficient home repair is reason to celebrate. Hello, Jupiter to Cuesta. I need some help with my electrical. Quick, efficient home repair is reason to celebrate. Yes, it's different. Wayne Acres Ford and Lake Worth bringing you information through innovation. A cutting edge interactive store leading the way. Touchscreen kiosks, innovative video walls providing the latest information and other trend setting technology. And to enhance your experience, I will be your personal showroom concierge. We think differently at Wayne Acres Ford and Lake Worth bringing you information through innovation. Experience a new WayneAcresFord.com and be part of our social community. All right, time to take a look at the stories making headlines around the world in 90 seconds. Rescuers continue to search for three people trapped underground after a gold mine collapsed in South Africa. Rescuers trying to find a mobile office that sank after the mine collapsed Friday. It collapsed when an underground pillar caved in. Uh, so far, 87 miners who were trapped underground have been rescued. Security was tight around the Stade de France today as the first rugby game there since the Paris attacks was set to take place. Police with dogs searched people in cars entering the stadium. Many fans said they felt safe with the security measures in place. The stadium was the first target in the Paris attacks where three separate bombs were detonated by suicide bombers. Police in Turkey have raided three factories producing unlicensed and poor quality inflatable boats. The boats being used to smuggle migrants into Greece. In total, 49 boats were seized. Factory owners have been fined in face of possible shutdown. Police in Istanbul and other countries have conducted similar raids on workshops that produced effective life jackets. And the world's only surviving set of giant panda triplets getting ready for the Chinese New Year. Keepers decorated the panda's enclosure with red decorations and peach blossoms symbolizing joy and fortune. The Chinese New Year holiday begins tomorrow with Monday marking the first day of the year of the monkey. Where's the snow for them to roll around in, right? That's a look at what's happening 
around the world. A desperate race is underway in Taiwan to find survivors of a powerful earthquake. It hit the island before dawn, collapsing a 17-floor apartment building where hundreds slept. Fox News' Brian Yenes has the latest on the search. The search and rescue continues in Taiwan. There are more than 100 people still missing. Hundreds more are injured after a powerful earthquake shook the nation just before 4 a.m. local time Saturday. At least 14 people are dead, and at least 11 of those victims were killed inside this collapsed 17-story residential building in Tainan, which is located on the southwestern side of the country. The apartment building is now ground zero. Its floors pancaking like an accordion, the building crashing on its side as families slept inside. The quake striking two days before the Lunar New Year, the most important family holiday in the Chinese calendar. More than 2,000 firefighters and soldiers are searching through the rubble. So far, about 250 people have been rescued, but the search is growing more desperate. Authorities say part of the apartment building is believed to be buried underground, swallowed by its own foundation, loosened by an earthquake tremor felt as far away as mainland China. Local media reports indicate the building housed a children's care center for newborns and mothers, some lucky enough to be reunited with their infants, others were not. A 10-day-old little girl and three other children were among the victims inside the apartment building. At 6.4 magnitude, this earthquake wasn't particularly the strongest, but the U.S. Geological Survey says the quake was especially destructive because it was shallow, striking just six miles underground. Shallow earthquakes cause more damage than deeper ones. The epicenter was also located on the island, not offshore, intensifying the earthquake. Authorities say it appears the more than 20-year-old high-rise building did not meet earthquake construction construction standards. Taiwan is used to earthquakes, its deadliest recorded occurring in 1999 when a 7.6 magnitude earthquake killed more than 2,300 people. In New York, Brian Yenis, Fox News. The Super Bowl is just around the corner now and oftentimes that comes with parties, food and new TVs. But one group of people are likely to shell out more cash than others. Details ahead. And cold weather is on the way. Coming up, I'll let you know just how cold it's going to get and how cold, how long that cold weather is going to stick around. a pop of color during City Furniture's President's Day sale. This queen bedroom set is just $9.99. This microfiber sofa, $4.99. This five-piece dining set, $4.99. And find more President's Day savings in the showroom and at cityfurniture.com. Plus, enjoy free shipping and no interest till 2018. Right now at City Furniture. your car looks says a lot about you. At Unlimited Auto Wash Club, we hand wash, dry, and put a beautiful shine on your car every time. Join the club and receive unlimited washes all month long. You'll feel like you bought a new car on every visit. Now that's a great deal for $24.95 a month with no contract. Pay by the visit or join the club. We make you look good. Unlimited Auto Wash Club. You've been in an accident, and now you have a choice. You can try to settle it yourself with the insurance company, but they're definitely going to offer you the least amount of money. You could call an attorney referral service, but why let some stranger pick an attorney you may know nothing about? Or you can call Rubenstein Law at 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Just last year, we recovered over $75 million for our clients. The choice is yours. Rubenstein Law. Call 1-800-FL-LEGAL. You're going to like the hottest SUV in South Florida, the 2016 Honda CRV. Drive one today for just $229 a month. Honda CRVs, the number one selling SUV and KBB's best buy of the year. Fully equipped with available Honda Lane Watch, brake assist, forward collision warning, and more. Drive CRVs for $229 a month this week at your South Florida Honda dealer. 
download the new Fox 29 mobile app and get your news today. Powered by Mullinax Ford, with the largest selection of Fords all in the palm of your hand. We are just one day away from the kickoff for Super Bowl 50, and for many, it is as much about the parties as it is about the big game. In fact, analysts have figured out that young adults will spend the most on the game day. The National Retail Federation reports people ages 25 to 34 will shell out about $140 for the game this year. That can be money spent on food, drinks, and new TVs for their Super Bowl parties. The overall average spending amount is about $82. Well, tomorrow the hype of Super Bowl 50 will give way to a shot at history for the Denver Broncos and Carolina Panthers. More than a million fans are in the Bay Area this weekend and millions around the world will be watching as the golden anniversary of the big game kicks off what could be a new era in the NFL. More than a million fans pouring into the Bay Area to be a part of the championship game and what many see as a changing of the guard in the NFL. The legendary Peyton Manning, a future Hall of Famer, in what could be his last game leading the Broncos. Cam Newton, who danced across the league this season, unbridled and unstoppable, the leader of the Panthers, and many believe the new face of the NFL. They are the marquee players in this super matchup, and this week Newton's been compared to the man he calls the gold standard for quarterbacks. Well, anytime you get compared to Peyton Manning, uh, you must be doing something right. So um, I take it for what it's worth. And Manning's take on the Panthers QB? He's been awesome. He's been awesome. Man. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the best word I can think of. Awesome. Word you hear a lot around here less than 24 hours before the big game. Now, both Manning and Newton quick to point out they are just part of the two teams playing tomorrow and that this is not a game just between the two quarterbacks. Tracking some colder air heading into South Florida right now. We're also tracking some rain too. Live Fox Cam looking out over downtown West Palm Beach. It's gloomy. It's a little cool out and here's the rain moving through right now. Not too much longer. I think by midnight we're just going to be looking at a couple spotty showers. Then by 2 o'clock, we'll get rid of it all together. So we still have some rain moving through the Treasure Coast. 62 in Vero, 63 in Fort Pierce, uh, 61 in West Palm Beach, 60 in Boynton, 61 also in Boca. And you're seeing some heavier rain starting to move through right now. We're tracking that cold front still back to the west, moving on through right now. And lower those temperatures another almost 10 degrees by the morning. So here's Vipercast. That rain gets on out of here uh, through the overnight hours. In the morning, we start off with some clouds. Uh, spotty breaks in the clouds as about all in the morning, but the afternoon we wipe all that out and we're going to see a lot of sunshine throughout the afternoon, but it's not going to warm us up all that much. High temperatures will stay into the lower 60s, so it'll be a chilly blustery day out there and we'll stay pretty dry for the upcoming days after that. Maybe a little bit more cloud cover uh, Monday night with the next cold front. So here are the wind gusts uh, through tomorrow. We're talking mid 20s, possibly up to say uh, 30 plus miles per hour or two. It'll be very, very windy throughout the day tomorrow. Then the wind will calm down going into uh, Monday morning. Still a little bit of wind, enough for to put a wind chill to the temperature out there. So it will be quite chilly for Monday morning. Then the wind really picks up a lot. Once again, we'll be see, seeing gusts Monday night, Tuesday morning into the 35 mile per hour range. So it'll feel very cold then too with the next burst of cold air coming our way. So low temperatures this week, well below the norm for this time of year. Average temperature 58 degrees will be below that 52, 42. Looks like the coldest morning Monday morning. Uh, still chilly on Tuesday, very windy. Tuesday morning, still 40s going on for Wednesday and Thursday. It will stay a pretty cold week for us. Small craft advisory for the boaters, uh, 20 miles offshore. We're talking the gale warnings out there for tomorrow. Seven day forecast, high temperatures stay in the 60s. The next several days normal this time of year is 76 degrees. We are well below that all the way through Friday. Finally, by Friday, Saturday, into next weekend, we'll start to warm back up into the middle 70s. Still to come in sports, a pair of former major champions going head to head in Boca Raton at the Allianz Championship. Ian Hest is in next.
the new Range Rover Evoque. Land Rover, above and beyond. I grew up in South Florida. It's my home. There are many good, hardworking people here trying to make ends meet. When the unexpected hits, an accident, an injury, that's when they really need someone fighting for their rights. Being there for our clients is a huge priority. We return every call and we're reachable 24-7. When we put the pieces back together for a family, that's an indescribable feeling. It never gets old. I'm Mark Anajar. If you need responsive legal help, call us for a free consultation. Honda, I like it! You're gonna like the hottest full-size sedan in South Florida. The brand new, redesigned 2016 Honda Accord. Drive one today for just $199 a month. Honda Accords, the number one selling sedans that cost less than the competition. Fully equipped with available Honda Lane Watch, forward collision warning, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Get Accords for $199 a month. This week at your South Florida Honda dealer. Yes, it's different. Wayne Acres Ford and Lake Worth bringing you information through innovation. A cutting edge interactive store leading the way. Touchscreen kiosks, innovative video walls providing the latest information and other trend setting technology. And to enhance your experience, I will be your personal showroom concierge. We think differently at Wayne Acres Ford and Lake Worth bringing you information through innovation. Experience a new WayneAcresFord.com and be part of our social community. In South Florida, air conditioning is a necessity, not a luxury. Hi, I'm Mike Lang from Air Around the Clock. At ATC, it's our goal to make you comfortable fast and keep you comfortable. We've got the largest stock of American Standard air conditioners and parts in South Florida, a fleet of 100 trucks, live operators ready to assist you 24-7, and financing plans to meet your individual needs. Call Air Around the Clock today. Air Around the Clock, there for you yesterday, here for you today, and planning for your tomorrow. You're in the zone, the Ford Sports Zone, from the team at ESPN 106.3. Welcome to the Ford Sports Zone. I'm Ian Hess. The Allianz Championship has hit the weekend. Second round play underway in Boca Raton this afternoon. Corey Pavin and Todd Hamilton atop the leaderboard after Friday. But today, several others making a push towards the top. Pavin looking to keep that momentum going during the second round by the former Ryder Cup captain. Yeah, not the hot start he had yesterday. Right off the first, has to settle for par, sinks it stays at six under for the moment. Tom Lehman, the 1996 Open champion, started today five under, long birdie just off, but Lehman saves par. The head-to-head -head matchup definitely on. Several guys trying to keep pace with those two. Joe Durant, one of them, with a birdie. He's at eight under, two off the lead. To 18 we go, Pavin looking for birdie, gets it. Finishing the day at 10 under, he'll head into Sunday with the lead. Right behind him though, it's Lehman. Finishing the day with a birdie to move to nine under par. Two former major champions going head to head tomorrow. Whether it's Alaska or second to last, you know, being right there where you know what's going on uh, is very enjoyable. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys who are pretty close. You know, so tomorrow, if it gets as windy as they say, you know, it should be the kind of day that separates the scores a bit. So a good score will really go a long way. On to the PGA Tour side of things, the waste management. Phoenix Open and Jupiter's Ricky Fowler in contention, but dealing with the loudest hole in all of golf. 80 decibels off the tee, roughly the sound of New York City traffic, and Ricky's about to hear it. Heading into the bunker, gonna cup that hand like Hulk Hogan. Definitely getting the booze, but he'd eventually make four par. 10 under for Ricky, two off the lead. Danny Lee, the leader, heading into tomorrow's final round. FAU basketball trying to find their fifth win in their last eight, but ran into a buzzsaw tonight on the road against the CUSA leader UAB Blazers. Lake Worth grad Gene Talsilla had 13 points. The good news, however, just like they had to play the best team in the conference, they return home to play the bottom team in CUSA at UTSA on Thursday. The World Series of Poker Circuit returning to the Palm Beach Kennel Club for the sixth consecutive year. The 12-day tournament began on Thursday. The casino champion crowned at the end, the player who has accumulated the most points total. And the tournament is filled with players from all different backgrounds. That's a special thing about poker. It's anyone's game. We see anyone from uh, a 21-year-old professional player to um, 
somebody's grandmother or a grandfather coming out and playing. The melange of people that you uh, get to be with and uh, talk to, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, pros here. People that uh, you would see on TV and, you know, uh, bigger events. I gotta get me some of those sunglasses. Like, well, I like yeah. the red ones. Even yeah, you, you wear the shades inside. <laughs> That's pretty right. cool. John, John's got the glasses. I don't know if he's got the sunglasses. No, inside. No, no. <laughs> People would say it's rude if I were to put on the sunglasses. <laughs> All Very right, thanks, time. Ian. Bluffing glasses. Bluffing <laughs> glasses. Yeah. yeah. All right, but we're telling the truth, it's going to be cold. <laughs> yeah, and we got some rain out there right now. That's going to end in a couple hours. We'll turn quite chilly and real windy tomorrow. We'll start off with temperatures in the low 50s, only warm up in the low to middle 60s, then cooling down Sunday night, low 40s. We may even see some spotty 30s on the map and some patchy frost possible too for some of the rural inland areas. Uh, and really, we're staying in the 60s all week long until we get to the end of the week and the weekend. I like it. Getting good wear of that winter gear. About time. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget you get the latest news 24 7 on our website, WFLX.com. Have a good night, everyone. Take your next giant leap at Space Camp, where you train like an astronaut and have fun with your team exploring planetary missions. Get ready for a challenge. Imagine your future and launch your adventure today. Book now at spacecamp.com. You're gonna like the hottest SUV in South Florida. The 2016 Honda CRV. Drive one today for just $229 a month. Honda CRVs, the number one selling SUV and KBB's best buy of the year. Fully equipped with available Honda Lane Watch, brake assist, forward collision warning, and more. Drive CRVs for $229 a month.